talking about 10 tricks to teach your toddlers to use a spoon and a fork. So number one, where you want to start when you're working with a toddler to your, learn to use a spoon, and you can do this as early as honestly, even before official toddlerhood, um, I would even give a six month old something to begin to dip with. My uh, product that is kind of my go to for that is the Num Num Goo Tensil. Can you see that? It comes with one good tensile that has a little bit of a cutout opening here and the exact same one that's filled with more of a silicone type material and the reason why i love that is because some kids need a smoother feel in their mouth and other kids need a little bit more input more proprioceptive input we call it and if they can really put their tongue inside that cutout opening like you see in this orange one that gives them the feedback so that in my opinion it reduces gagging. I can see a lot of you giving thumbs up and hearts. I know a lot of you love this product. We're often at the American Speech Language Hearing Association together. And uh, the year before that, we were at the Occupational Therapy Association. So be sure to go to numnuminc.com and check out their products. I'll put the link in the comments for you. But why do we want to start with dipping? Because think about it for a second. Even when you and I hold on to a spoon, our first step to spoon feeding is actually dipping. And that's what we want our kids to learn from too. So that's trick number two, that although you're gonna start with a dipper, like a Num Num Goo Tensil, or you could certainly use a big old fat carrot, just make sure it's big enough that the kids can't snap off a piece. You could use like one of these little pea chewers that we all love to use with little kids, something like that. That's totally fine. They can even use their fingers as a good dipper to start. But once they've got the idea of holding onto something and dipping, the next step is the scoop. So I also want you to take a look at Num Num's website. They have this fabulous bowl called a beginner bowl. And I'm not even gonna show it to you today because I want you to go there. They don't even know I'm doing this tonight. I'm just such a big fan of their products. Um, numnuminc.com and look at their beginner bowl. That bowl has a slope to the side. And the beauty of that is you can coat it with a little bit of puree or sometimes I use something like Cool Whip, to be honest with you, because for a beginner eater, something that sticks easily to the spoon is what you're going for. So you set them up for success. And then you can branch out to obviously healthier options. But there's nothing wrong with a little whipped cream every once in a while. Okay, so let's talk about the type of spoon. That's number three. You and I love to feed kids with something like, this is a therapy spoon, we call this a maroon spoon. But honestly, I often use this little coated spoon. Do you see that? Yeah. Um, these coated spoons are really popular, but they're great for an adult. They're great for our hand. They're wonderful to feed little kids with this way but for a child to try to hold this especially a beginner eater the handle's too narrow it's very slippery when it gets mush on it yeah i love the spoon itself because it's nice and flat and it's small but let me show you what you actually want to hand to them so they can learn to dip and scoop what you're looking for is something more like this shape Okay, do you see how nice and flat that is? Yeah, there's a little bit of a dip there to hold the puree or the mush or the mashed potatoes, whatever it happens to be, oatmeal. But it's a nice short handle. I love this one because it's a little bit curved. Imagine a tiny little fist around that. You want their fist to be as close to the spoon bowl as possible so that when they do go to dip and then scoop, there isn't a whole lot of wrist rotation. See that movement? Watch. Dip, scoop, straight in. Compare to, now nothing wrong with the spoon, it's just not a good one for a beginner spoon eater, a <laughs> spoon feeder, I should say, <laughs> because it's got a really long handle. So when the kids go to grab it here, it's very hard to dip, scoop, and there's a lot of wrist rotation. If you do only have this longer handle, then make sure you encourage the kids to hold down here. But if they have the room to scoot up, they will. So try to go with something with a little bit shorter handle, as you saw here, 
and is very similar to something with your dipper. See how short that handle is? Awesome. All right. So once you begin to master using the right spoon, the dip, the scoop, and into the mouth, kids get the hang of that and they're ready to move on to a fork. Forks are a little trickier. So let's talk about those. Now, forks, in a perfect world, I'd like you to use the same type of spoon made into a fork. See that? And look, very soft tongs, right? Not pokey at all, won't hurt the kids. Or you could pick something that actually has a little bit of a bendable handle to it so that when the kids begin to dip and scoop, they sometimes have a tendency to flip their spoon over. And if they dip and scoop and there's a bend here, they tend to learn to tuck their little thumb right there. You can encourage them to do that and that will encourage them to come this way toward their mouth. So um, look for these little bendable options as well. When you are looking at forks though, you're gonna notice that you can certainly get a nice short handle. This one has a little wave to it, which I love. Even though it's a tiny bit deep, that's okay because kids don't start right on forks. They go to spoons and you want your spoon bowl to be fairly flat. A fork doesn't matter as much because now they have more advanced upper lip skill and they can clean off that deep indentation with their top lip. So when you're looking at a fork like this, it's very tempting to go to a metal fork. And yeah, this one does have the rounded off tongs, which is great, but start here. This is still a lot for a kid and it only takes one random poke into the gums and they are turned off to fork, uh, to fork feeding. So be really careful about that. However, once they get the hang of it and you want to advance to something like this, especially if the kids are beginning to eat meat, et cetera, you definitely still want to look for that nice fat handle. This one's really great because it's got the texture on it so the kids can really hold on to it. Yeah, I like this one too. I see lots of thumbs up. So this is just a regular toddler fork. This is for a very advanced toddler because look, it's really pointy. It's got a super flat handle, not easy to hang on to. Fine if you're older and you're skilled, but not for the beginner because we want to set these kids up for success. So how do we do that? Let's talk about a trick for that. Well, of course, one of my favorites, I think a lot of you are familiar with this, is to use an ice cube tray. So you're just going to take your food. Let's say you're going to take a piece of cheese. Cheese is great to teach fork feeding because it's easy to pierce, especially if it's brought to room temperature. And when you put it in your tray, and of course this is laying flat on your table, now when the kids go to put their fork in, they've got some boundaries here. See that? So it's much easier for them to stab and lift out. It's the ice cube tray that creates the boundaries, uh, kind of like bumpers in the bowling alley, frankly. So it works super, but let me show you a few more, I think a little bit more fun options. One thing I love to do is, especially for my kids who are just starting out, is get a mini muffin tray. Now you can get one that only has six. I'm trying to talk to you and show you these at the same time in the screen. Let me back up a little bit. There we go. But I have fun getting at least these two rows filled with things that the kids can pierce and learn to eat. The trick is you want to pick something that's a preferred food. You don't want to put a new food in here for this because they're learning a motor skill. So when we do end up with the food in their mouth, we want them to love that food. But look what I did here. You see this? These are two big cucumber slices. Let me show you how thick they are. So about a half an inch. And I love to put these in muffin tins because for kids who are just starting out with a fork, when instead of trying to go for the cheese, which is great, you definitely want to work on that. But if you really want to get them started, have them aim for something really big like this. They can't help but pierce it and pull it right out. They're not going to put this big old thing in their mouth. No kid's going to do that. So you don't have to worry about that. It's all about the piercing. And then you can move to smaller ones. It's not a good idea. Yeah, I love doing that. And I'll cut out, um, even take a round cookie cutter and cut out slices of jicama 
or a oh, pretty firm sweet potato, like I've just barely steamed it, that works really well. And you can fill up all of these circles if you want and just practice piercing those and pulling them out. Sometimes when we break a step down into simple steps and don't worry so much about bringing it up for our mouth yet, the kids get the hang of it a lot faster. That's how we all learn motor skills. And here's another fun uh, tip for you. Whenever you're, uh, I'm glad you guys like that one. Um, whenever you are, gosh, out and about in the cooking store, the dollar store, or even when you're unwrapping frozen food, check this out. See this cool little container? I got this in my crab cake package. <laughs> I bought some little mini crab cakes from Costco the other day, and I saw this cool package that came in. I washed it out, and I've been using this with all my kids just as a fun way to work on fork skills. Now, if you happen to have a child who has some fine motor challenges, remember, I'm a speech pathologist. I'm going to help you find an occupational therapist to work on a lot of these skills. These are just basic tips for any kid that um, those of us who do a lot of feeding therapy, we pick these up over the years. But for kids who really need that guidance from an occupational therapist, that's your pro for your kids with special needs and, and fine motor delays. All right, let's keep going with a couple more tips and then we'll take questions. So make sure you're typing in your questions because that's how you get entered to win a copy of Adventures of Veggie Land. And I'm going to be answering those questions in just a few minutes. Okay, last thing I wanted to mention. Oh, oh wait, two last things. Okay, this is my other favorite. I get these little espresso cups off the clearance rack at cooking stores all the time and they're like 99 cents and obviously they're for espresso or maybe some cocoa for a little kid but these are super fun because they're nice and tall and not only can you throw in a piece of cheese or whatever you want to work on the pincer grass we've talked about that in other videos but you can also use this to practice fork skills and the sides of the cup itself or that beautiful barrier to set the kids up for success. Isn't that a good one? I love these. The kids love to hold on to it and then they can use both hands to just manipulate a little bit. But my favorite is to take our traditional stacking cups and you're going to start with the tiniest cup. There's your piece of cheese, right? Just like your espresso cup. Practice there. And then once the kids get a hang of that, then you're going to put it in the next size cup. Now they have a little bit more room to dance around to find the cheese, but their skill is improving and they probably will be able to do it. Then you can advance to the next size cup. And then finally, the next and the largest one. Isn't that great? That's something that even for therapists, actually, we could make a note of that in our chart notes as a way of showing progress. We always love to show progress in our chart notes. Well, my friends, that's how you teach toddlers how to use a spoon and then a fork.